When I was in uh, fifth year, so I was about 17 years of age, uh, a, a teacher came to do a substitute job in the school where uh, I went to secondary school. And he was young. I, I'd say he was relatively fresh out of college, so he must have been 24 or 5. And uh, he was a teacher, but his teaching was only basically to fuel his music career. Basically, he, used, uh, he was a musician. Well, that, that's how he would have defined himself. And his teaching just kind of helped it pay, for, pay it for his guitars and gear and all of that. Uh, so he was a really good guitarist. Uh, so on a couple of occasions then, we'd, we stayed behind after school. And uh, he, he used to give guitar lessons. And he was very, very good with students. But as I say, a very, very good guitarist. And I remember seeing him play Eric Clapton's Tears in Heaven. And I said, my goodness, I'll never be able to do that. Look at them fingers moving. I'll never be able to do that. Never, never, never. So he sat me down and he showed me the first couple of positions, awkward all yokes, and uh, good. And then I, so I got the first few, and then he showed me the next few. And uh, this is before the days of YouTube, okay, just for all of you out there. So we had to learn guitar by actual human interaction or using books. Right, so, so um, yeah, so we didn't have, we couldn't just, you couldn't just Google it, right? So someone had to show you. Uh, so, and that's how I learned. So it was little by little by little. His teaching and my practice. His teaching and my practice. And then after a while, you're actually playing something that you thought maybe a month beforehand I'll never manage, never. But then, voila, you start, you just, you learn, you learn. Uh, every time I hear today's gospel, uh, it's, it, it kind of makes me smile because it's uh, so impossible. So you must therefore be perfect just as your heavenly father is perfect. So you have to be perfect. You have to be flawless. You have to be as good as Padre Pio and Mother Teresa and actually be as good as um, God. Be as perfect as God. Best of luck run along. Like... <laughs> Sorry, what? How, how is this even possible? The whole point of this gospel, like, is that it's not possible, you know, because you, 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 can't, you, you can't love like that. You can't, how on earth can we be as possible, as, as perfect as God? How? Um, it's just like, I mean, I, I, do you know, how, how time is it now? It's uh, 10 past nine. How often have I fallen short since I woke up this morning at seven o'clock? Okay, did I hit snooze? Yeah, okay, so, right, that's fail. <laughs> uh, you think it's just, as you look through your day, you know, how many times have uh, just fallen a bit short of the mark where you could have done more, you could have been more loving, could have been uh, more joyful, you could have chosen others over yourself, whatever it may be. That's perfection, you know, to, to get all of those right all the time consistently so to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect my goodness it's actually it's just it's literally out of this world impossible and in a way i think that's the point that the lord is making because you would imagine the, the the apostles listening going how how on earth how, how are we supposed to do that there's another subtlety in what the lord is saying here in the gospels this is from matthew chapter five uh Jesus said to his apostles, you've learned how it was said, you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say this to you. Now for a Jew to say, you've heard it said, you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say this to you. You're saying, you've heard it said in the law, the most sacred text we have. You've heard it said there, but I say this to you. Now that statement for a Jew is huge because you're now saying the law says this but i'm saying something else something different something actually harder i'm kind of we're okay if while it's good that we love those who love us that's again that's a fairly it's a fairly low bar just to love those who love you in return that's that's not bad um but i'm saying this to, to you now even love those who hate you so and we're, we're, we're raising it another step but again, like for a Jew, you're saying that the law that you've heard, the law that you've been living according to, is actually not enough. But it was, it was I say, the, the highest authority they had. But I say this to you. It's, 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 
it, uh, so if I phrase it this way, it might sound a bit heretical. It's like it might say, you know, you've read in the Catechism, or the Pope has said this, but I say this to you. Now, that wouldn't happen, but it's, that's the kind of level we're talking about here, something that's so solid and, and ingrained in our teaching, and then yet we're called to more. So the Lord is really raising the bar here. So how does this, how on earth is this, is this going to even be possible? Okay, well, I think two little things. Um, one, from St. Paul to the Philippians. This is this, this fantastic line. We've heard it so often, but I think we can't, we can't live it enough, which is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not on my own. Because if we think we're going to attain perfection, if we're going to attain God-likeness on our own, what does that make us? Well, it makes us God, which we're not. But we're supposed to share in, the Lord, in God's divine nature. So we're supposed to be like God's. Yes. <laughs> you confused? Okay. So we're, we're supposed to be like God, but not without God. We're supposed to be like God through God's grace. We're supposed to be like God, our yes, our collaboration, and God's grace. And then we can be capable of sharing God's divine nature, i.e. heaven. In heaven, we sh we're like God. We share God's nature. Again, it's a, an absolutely incredible thought that we could be uh, divinized, you know, made like God. That's, that's what he wants. That's what is possible through him. That's what we're called to. We're not just, again, called to live a, a life here where we avoid any major sin and then kind of get to a better place known as heaven. No, heaven, we're taken into the very nature of God, taken into his eternal exchange of love. We're taken into his, his, his heart. We're made like him. So the, the standard is, is, is very, very high, but never just merely through our own power that would be that would be ridiculous to, to, to presume or think that we can become God without God. That's, that's never the case. So then we can become like God, yes. Yes, actually. But through God. Through him. Through his grace. It's, 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 it's mind-blowing. It's, it's incredible. But then, if the Lord can trust me to be like him, to be Christ-like in small things, then he can trust me to be Christ-like in larger things and trust me to be Christ-like in the largest things and then trust me to be like him in heaven. So it, it makes sense. If, 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 you know, you, you, it's the same in any job. Remember when I, when I started fitting windows, um, the first job that you get, you're, you're the gopher. Oh yeah, can you go down to the, go down to the van there and bring up the, the lump hammer? And so you run up and down, up and down the stairs. You're, if you, fitting windows on the third floor of a convent or something. So you run downstairs, run upstairs, there's your hammer. And he says, oh yeah, sorry, uh, can you go back down to the van again? And let's bring up the bucket of, uh, of bonding. So it's kind of a cement kind of a thing. Oh yeah, no water. So you run down the stairs and up, up. Then you give him the bucket. He says, oh, oh, sorry, look, one, one last thing, just the spirit level. Can you get the spirit level? No water, no water. <laughs> and you give him the spirit level. I said, right, okay, grand. Yeah. I think uh, Jerry might need me. He might need some help next door. So he went to Jerry and Jerry. Oh, Jerry! Oh, well, there you are. Hey, come here. Can you run to the van there and get the ladder? <laughs> no bother. <laughs> so you run down and you bring up the ladder. And you might say, at this point, sorry, my dignity. I'm way, I'm way beyond this. I can do way more than that. All right. But the point is, then when they ask you, like, for the, you know, the the 12 mil hilty drill bit, that you might be 100 percent sure what it is. Uh, but then you work it out. Now you're learning what the tools are. And now you're learning also the order of things that you're going to need in a job. So the next time you get to a job, you already bring up the ladder, you already bring up the hilti, you already bring up the spirit level. So now when you get to the job, job's already ready. And the boys are like, oh, fair play to you. Come here, while you're there, do you knock out that window there? And then so you start knocking out the window, right? And so then I broke a chisel on my first day because I cranked the chisel in and I treated a chisel like a, like a nail bar. Long story, don't, won't go into it. Point being, you get trusted with little things, and then as you get trusted with little things, those things get a little bigger, and you get trusted with more, trusted with more, trusted with more, and then within a month, can you fit that double glazed unit on a shop front? No bother. <laughs> but you've learned how, through learning what the tools necessary are, learning what the tolerance of the tools is, learning what breaks when you do what, and then you learn. 
Same with God. He will trust us with small things today. The intelligence that you have, the ability you have, the time you have, the money you have, the resources you have, the talents you have. He trusts you with them today. Do I use them for his greater glory? If I use them well today, I think he'll actually give me more tomorrow. If I use them well tomorrow, I think he'll give me more the day after. And then, after that then, there may be a period of kind of spiritual, dare I say, desolation, where you don't actually feel any reward for your prayer. But you walk by faith, continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Not because you feel it, but because you know it. I know the Lord loves me. I know the Lord listens to me, even though I feel nothing. So now your prayer is getting even more and more purified. So this is the, the Lord working in you and through you, forming your heart, making you like him, making you perfect as the heavenly father is perfect. Your yes, his grace, just like our lady. Christ then is born in you through your yes, your fiat, and the grace of God, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And then through that, great things, miracles can happen in you and around you. And so we ask the good Lord today that we won't be intimidated by this, by this gospel, this call to perfection, which we're so incapable of on our own. But we are consoled today by the words of St. Paul from Philippians I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Amen.